YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe for more thought-provoking content like this. Click the bell icon button. This is your boy Avery Giovanni reporting live from the Middle East. Obviously, I'm Mr. International, internationally known. Um, thank you for liking the last video. Thank you for looking at the last video. Um, as it stands, y'all know I'm deployed. I can only put out so much content. Schedule changes all the time. Um, I got a, a good schedule then it kind of changed. So we just gonna go on the fly. If there's free time, I'm gonna sit down 15, 20 minutes, make a video, do what I need to do and get it out. So no matter what, we are always going to give you real content here. Uh, if you like this thought provoking content, click the bell icon button. We know the like goal is 2300 or the subscriber goal is 2300 at this point. Might raise that when we get to 2300, but we're not gonna worry about it right now. Charles Harris is very interesting to me. I think Charles Harris is going to benefit greatly from Aiden Hutchinson and Romeo Acora being back. Um, him re-signing was a big priority for myself. Uh, obviously, you've seen that on me and Raw Detroit. Shout out to Raw Detroit. You've seen that on our Let's Play GM podcast. If you didn't know, I team up with people and we like to do several podcasts together or something real in-depth to get the juices flowing. We even even said or asked, you know, what was his pay mark? I already thought his pay mark was an $8 million cap, maybe $7 million. And he signed for pretty much the same as me and Raw Detroit agreed on. Uh, with that, I love Charles Harris. I, I think he's a solid player. Um, he's more of a defined fit role type of guy. Yes, he's a pass rusher. Yes, he's very uh, limited as a linebacker. Um, but what he can provide to this defense is almost seemingly something of of what the first overall pick pr will provide for the defense So of the Jacksonville Jaguars. So I think he's going to benefit greatly from the new scheme, obviously the 4-3 attacking scheme, and he's going to benefit from a healthy defensive, len uh, defensive line, very versatile defensive line, and a very stout uh, first round pick in Aiden Hutchinson. Now the biggest thing about Charles to me that stands out is the fact that yes, he had 7.5 sacks, dang near eight sacks last year. And people think that he's just a pass rusher. And that's okay, you can think that. It's okay to be just a pass rusher. But I think he's a little more than that. Now, he was protected in coverage slightly. And I'm gonna get in that in a second. He was protected in coverage all the time. Um, you see the drop backs, you see this, this, and this. He doesn't drop back consistently a lot and he does not give up a lot of plays in the pass sounds because he's primarily rushing the passer. And that's what we use him for. That's his role on this defense, especially in that 3-4 alignment. That's what his role was. And even in the 4-3 alignment, we've seen his hand in the ground. Now. Even though he's limited to pass rushing and maybe a little run spy type of zone or my personal favorite balling out to the flat, which I'll get into a minute. I think he has a lot of ability and he can actually do a lot because of the pieces and the people around him. Again, Aiden Hutchinson, Romeo Quar, that could really pay the way for another contract or revisiting another contract. Even though he's getting 16 million for the next two years, I feel like that eight million per year dollar deal, I think that that's something that can be reworked. And that's something that he could probably can look at negotiating with so he can get a long-term deal for the later, later half. But with contracts comes money and with money comes responsibility. Let's take a look at the role that he had in the Detroit Lions defense, as well as what he can expound on and do better with. Did I use that word right? Anyway, like, comment, subscribe for more thought-provoking content like this. Remember, this is Spirit of Detroit Podcast. We're better than the competition, and we're smarter than the competition. Love y'all. Let's get into it. The thing about Harris I love, man, is he's a re-react defender, man. Here he is lined up off the left tackle up to the farther side of the screen, to the top of the screen. 
Um, in this in this formation, this is going to be a run play with Kyler Murray. This is going to be a run pass option or a run quarterback option. And I just love the fact that he can read and react. I love the fact that he can almost be a spy for the, either the running back or the quarterback and kind of take it away. He can go from pass rush to reacting to the runner very quickly. Okay, on this play, you're going to see him almost make the split decision in real time and get the sack on the quarterback. And I believe it went for a sack, but you're going to see him in real time make the decision, be the spy. And this is why I relate his game to the first overall pick, because honestly, this is what that guy from Georgia was doing. He was actually being a cleanup man on these types of plays, these run options with the quarterback and the running back and being a person who can play contain. We talked about how contain was really important. And that's something that was in his game that really shined in Arizona. Can we talk about his open field tackling ability? I mean, just for one second. It only shows itself when it's needed. But, I mean, it's amazing what he does. Now, obviously, it wasn't great all season. I mean, he could show blitz. He can start at the line, but he can drop into a buzz. He can drop into the flat, and he can drop into the um, the boundary line area and then make a tackle when that running back is leaking out, that fullback is leaking out, or that specialty player is leaking out, and he can have a one-on-one -on -one tackle. It's really important for the defense. Now, y'all know this is balanced content. Okay, for most people, he's just a pass rusher. For me, he's a good pass rusher, but sometimes he relies too heavily on the bull rush and he relies too heavily on just being quicker than the left tackle or the right tackle. In this play here, this can be very this could be very evident and seen and identified that if he does not have that first step against you, if there is no swim move, he gets engaged and it's hard to get disengaged. Now, on this play, when he's a disruptor, he creates things for other people that are disruptors. Again, I think that Charles Harris has the ability to get the sack on this play, but someone else gets the sack. And that's okay. But when he gets that step on you, when he gets that arm over, when he's able to disengage, oh my God, the pocket will collapse. Here you have a perfect stop by Lee McNeil. Um, perfect sack by Lee Manier. You have so many things working in your favor. Lee McNeil is clogging in the middle. Lee Manier is coming around the side. Like That's the defense you want to see. And that's the defense that you'll see in the attacking 4-3 that we're going to implement soon. I love the fact that he's kind of limited in his role here because he can play these defined roles very well. In this next play, you can see that he's reading and reacting to the running back. He's going to read and react to contain the zone, and then once that running back leaks out, he's going with him. And again, once that running back leaks out, he's flying to the ball. My biggest thing about him is you don't have to put him in a situation where he's flying down the sidelines covering tight ends. You don't have to do that. All you have to let him do is cover the buzz, cover the uh, boundary mark, and react to running backs and react to the boundary line. I mean, he's a player that's going to chase down the play. He's going to run from behind, chase down the play. But he's also a player that's going to give you something in the pass game. He's not going to give you everything, he, obviously. But this is the beauty of Aaron Glenn protecting him as a linebacker. Because, look, we know you're limited. We know you can only cover the boundary. We know you can only cover the running back, read, react to the running back. And when that running back is on a wheel route, go ahead, run, track down that running back to make the open field tackle. I just, again, want to highlight his ability to drop in zone uh, and get to the boundary line and get to the, the open field tackle in the flat. I just want to, again, highlight how he's not on the defensive line right here, not in the front seven right here. He's off to the sides of your screen. Quarterback throws the ball. Boom. What well, we got to the running back leak out. He comes down like a hammer. I love that. That's what you need to win. That type of belief and play, that's what makes a good defense. Doing the simple play, because that could have went off crazy. Again, he gives you everything you need. And if he adds to his game, he's going to give you everything you want in a, a Detroit linebacker. 
So, in conclusion, Charles Harris, I'm expecting big things. I'm expecting uh, a repeat of the 7.5 sacks. I'm respect. Uh, I'm expecting just him to benefit off the defensive line and the additions to defensive line. Benefit also off the scheme of the attacking on defensive line, and and benefit off of the flex. You know, you're still going to have a 4-3-3-4 four, three, three, four, uh, multifaceted scheme. And I believe that, you know, whether he's a depth piece or whether he's a rotational player, he can still eat. And, you know, Aiden Hutchinson, Romeo Quar obviously going to get the bulk of the snaps. And that might put his sack numbers down. But I still believe if there are injuries or whatever happens during the season, because it's a long season, if there's times where he's on the field for six or seven plays or eight plays a game, I believe he can do something and he can make whirlwinds, you know. So uh, this is Avery Giovanni. This is Spirit of Detroit podcast. Like, comment, subscribe for more thought-provoking content like this. Shout out to Micro Mike, Gridiron Blitz, LNIU. Um, just shout out to everybody. Remember, we killing the competition, and we also we all love the competition, but we killing the competition. And shout out to all my subscribers, man. You guys make this channel work. You guys make this channel run. So Lisa De Lorenzo, Gil Bertello. Uh, C, Mr. Mezzaroli, um, Hollifield, it goes on and on and on. D. Reese, Man Bees Morris. Oh, well, well, it's the end of the video. Like, comment, subscribe. If I didn't say your name, don't worry, I did not forget about you. You mean something to me, and you mean something to the people around you. I love y'all, appreciate y'all, uh, support the troops.